This video was from a day I spent at the Colorado River uh, in the float tube fishing for some shallow water. Um, some of them were spawning, some were just up in the shallows, but uh, targeting smallmouth and largemouth bass. Um, I hadn't fished this part of the, of the river in probably over a year, um, so I was just kind of going on a, a hunch and where I've seen them this time of year uh, in the past and wanted to go explore and stuff like that. Um, a couple days before this I did spend um, on the boat with my buddy Chris fishing Havasu. Um, and we did catch a bunch of cool fish. We did some night fishing, which was really fun. Chris got like a big like five and a half pounder. Um, I'll put that up right now. But the footage obviously at night kind of sucks. And then during the day on that part of the river, you just have those big boats driving by you all day. And it's just so obnoxious. So the, the audio on it is just terrible. So I'm not going to do anything with those clips. But it was, it was a really fun couple of days. And then the last day I was on my own, decided to hit this spot on the float tube. But yeah, caught a bunch of fish, caught a couple big fish, um, surprisingly for that part of the river. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this one. And again, before I cut to the fishing, uh, my full-time job is a loan officer. So gotta throw this in here because I do have bills to pay. But uh, yeah, if you guys are looking to buy a home or currently own a home and are looking to refinance or anything like that, uh, shoot me an email down below. It's fluentmortgage at gmail.com. I will answer any of your questions from my work email. Um, but yeah, the, the rates are kind of all over the place right now. And I know a lot of people that are kind of hesitant on buying a house right now because they don't know what's going on. But Trust me, now's, now's, now's the time. So don't hesitate. If you guys have questions, shoot me an email. I can price you out, give you some options. And yeah, hopefully I uh, get you guys a new house. But yeah, enjoy this one and uh, leave some comments, like, and subscribe if you guys like this stuff. Again, we are heading quickly into the saltwater season. I know I've been doing a lot of bass stuff, but I just love bass fishing this time of year. But stay tuned for more catching cooks and uh, taking my boat out offshore to Catalina, all the fun stuff. So yeah, stay tuned guys. So there's a little smallmouth right here on a bed. He wasn't looking at the sink though. You can put some sort of smelly jelly on there. I don't think it really matters which one, but we'll see if that kind of fires them up a little more. I've seen it happen in the past where they won't even look at a bait. And then you put some smelly jelly on the same exact bait. And then they really get upset with it. Dead. Beautiful Colorado River smallmouth.
Ja. That's a large mouth. This one keeps grabbing it, but dropping it so fast. Another beautiful little small mouth. Look at those red eyes, they're so cool. All fired up. Thanks, old buddy. So that one's kind of cool because I threw the Senko under that, that boat right there. But it hit bottom and I was reeling it back in, I saw him chase it up. So I didn't see if it was a small mouth or not at first. So I slowly slid in there and saw the bed, and I saw him kind of sitting off of it. So I actually had to do a little bit of work to kind of get him agitated enough to fully commit to eating this thing. And by doing that, like, I was flipping it in there and just kind of like twitching it off the bottom kind of right by him. He wasn't even like really reacting to it on the bed. So it's really interesting, it's really important, I guess, to pay attention. Every fish is a little bit different. They all have different attitudes. <laughs> that, one was, that one was a badass. You guys are good luck. <laughs> I chased them down here. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching people fish in here for two months, and you're the first guy I've seen catch a fish. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I know they catch them. You just never see them at the right time. You just never see them at the right time. I'm really, I'm really sneaky in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> a little striper. A nice size oh, striper, yeah. Nice. A little one, yeah. I'll yeah. take that. 
Very cool. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, yeah beautiful one. <laughs> That's awesome. Beautiful little largemouth there. River largemouth. Like a little smally. Nice. Angry little dude. So pretty. I love these things. What a pretty fish. Yeah, bud. yeah, as I'm just cruising down this bank, I'm looking for beds, obviously, but I'm casting this wacky rig Senko. What's up, Dev? Um, anywhere there's like shade, so anywhere that I can get underneath the dock pilings or underneath these boats. These fish are kind of just stacked up hunting underneath those, but there's also fish on beds, so just kind of blind casting while looking for beds. It seems to be working out. Oh, have you? Is he eating anything you're feeding him? Oh yeah, everything. I can scratch and uh, oats and stuff, yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. I didn't know you were feeding him. <laughs> He's a beautiful guy, though. You guys have, like, access to, like, night crawlers or anything like that pretty easy? I don't. No. No, no uh, well, I feed the ducks and whatever the ducks don't get, whatnot. Look at that. He's beautiful. Get him back in there for you. I saw the ducks hanging out there. That's awesome. Yeah, feed the ducks. And we've got some uh, mama duck and her eggs in here. Oh, no way. Oh, up top? Yeah. That's the awesome. Of the, the tiki. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah. But I'm sure it'll get, uh, you'll start seeing more and more of them as it gets a little warmer. It's still in the low 60s, it feels like. Yeah. Definitely feel it my toes. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Well, you too. Smallmouth. Hey, I did it. Oh, I believe I sunk it, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I honestly don't even know how many of that is, but look at that. It's that BKK wacky rig hook. Pinned him. It's got that like wider gap. 
and it works perfect for the Senkos instead of just like the normal drop shot hooks. But look at how it pinned them on there. Got him. Beautiful smallmouth. But yeah, honestly, I don't know how many of that is. It's got to be close to 10 now. Another chunky little smallmouth. Thanks, bud. So cool. I did until I realized the water's still cold. <laughs> hey, puppy. That's Tiger. Hi, Tiger. I can tell why you named him that. I love the colors. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Tiger? That's Tiger. Got another one. So I think this was the male. I just blind casted that sink over here. <clears throat> Caught one in the same area. I think this nice. So I caught the either the male or the female. I don't know. They're both about the same size. Just blind casting that sinko. Just came over and checked it out. Oh, look at that. It's pooping out crawdads to. Gross. Make that little jig. God, so pretty. Yeah, another beautiful smallmouth smoke that little finesse jig. It's so fun. Thanks, bud. Alright. <laughs> I'm tired of paying for the fuel, man. <laughs> How you guys doing? Doing good. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. a little slow today. Yeah. I think it's been hit really hard. Yeah. I bet, man. Yeah, there was a, a tournament up there at see yesterday, right? I don't know. I think there was, yeah. Got it. Right on. Well, good luck. Have fun, guys. Alright, man. That's a nice little setup. <laughs> Thanks. That's crazy. There's literally... So there's a spawning pair of smallies right here that no joke the female she's beautiful though she's all lit up he's all kind of opaque they're literally maybe an inch bigger than my senko so like six inches long in spawning that's crazy got it first drop Oh, he did not like that crawdad on his bed. That was so sick. I was watching these little ones over here. I looked to my right, and there's a, a much better one on a bed over here. <laughs> Flip that little uh, that little finesse jig out there, and he he saw it. He, he was off his bed, turned like charged. Oh, I came off. Dang it. That was a better one. But yeah, he turned on from off his bed and just charged it and just smoked it like instantly. So my mouth do not like crawdads. <laughs> Try to throw something different out there. <sighs> Come here, bud. Got it. Yeah. <laughs>
that was so obviously I hooked him on that on that craw and he pulled the hook flipped it back out there and he didn't want anything to do with the craw so I threw out this little I forget what that head's called but I just let it sit on the bed and I saw him sliding back in and the water's so clear he was looking at it from like four feet away and I just shook it a little bit and he got mad and swam right at it popped it once and he just smoked it again Hook up land race will also help save your baits. Is if you find a fish on there that's super aggressive, try to throw a bait that has a big hook on it. So I'm gonna throw this one back out. That way, if I get it, get that hook in him, he's a lot less less likely to jump and spit it. But that Sanko, when they're close on the wacky rig, it's a small hook. So you know you might set the hook when he doesn't have the bait fully in his mouth yet. So just something I kind of pay attention to. I don't know if it's something everyone does, but. This guy seemed pretty aggressive, so he should pick this up pretty quick. This guy's already nipping at it. Just like that, so I got that big meaty hook in him. Let's see if it stays pinned. It should though. Boom. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> oh man, I love these small mouth. They're so aggressive. What a beautiful fish. Got him right in the roof of the mouth. And they're deep. Such a beautiful fish. There he is. Good job. <laughs> Yay. I did it. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Not at all. That's a little small mouth. Yeah. 
All right, guys, a little update for you. Um, I've been putting putting a hurting on them. No, no big ones uh, yet, but honestly, back here, it's very rare that you can find a big one, let alone get them to bite. I have seen uh, two or three fish that were like over probably five pounds, but they were just so spooky. I mean, this place gets hit pretty hard and it's super clear visibility. Um, I talked to one boater going by and he said it's been slow for him. And uh, I was out here yesterday on Chris's boat, and honestly, it was pretty slow for us then too. I think being in the float tube in situations like this definitely has its uh, its its benefits because you can sneak up on those fish. And even if you know you're sitting there like fishing that bed, your profile is so much smaller and so much quieter than hitting the trolling motor, being on spot lock, just seeing that big you know boat moving over their heads. So definitely benefits uh, in this in this situation. But the key the key bait today has been. The Wacky Rig Senko with these uh, BKK uh, Wacky Rig hooks that were just sent to me uh, to try out. And honestly, I love them. I'm usually really particular about hooks and tackle, but this is what I'm using today. Uh, the ones I used to use the Gamagatsu ones before this, and they had that little wire keeper. But honestly, it didn't really help at all. If you were throwing it into any structure at all, that little wire would just bend out of the way and get snagged anyway. So using these today, um, I don't think I've pulled the hook on any fish on the wacky rig. Um, and then of course my old faithful right here, that little finesse jig, the Z-Man. It's basically just a, a Ned rig head with a little skirt and that little jig there. Um, that's been killer on the beds, especially for the smallmouth. They hate that crawdad, and it just stands there and floats right up. But yeah, just blind casting the. Uh... Sorry, there's a bed right there. Um, just blind casting the Senko as I'm just looking for beds, and then flipping that little, that little crawdad on there. It's been super fun. The water's a little chilly. Legs are a little cold, but luckily it's like 90 degrees out, so it's beautiful. But yeah, we'll keep trying for another maybe hour or so. I can't believe it happened again. <laughs> no way. <dude. laughs> no way. Come here, buddy. I need to get this guy in the net. Oh my god. Come on, please. Let's get the boots. No, come on. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so glad I was recording for that. I can't believe that happened again for the second time this year. Oh my gosh. Look at that guy. Nice one. Oh my god, I can't believe that. So, uh, you guys have, you guys didn't watch, ow. Didn't watch that, I think it was two videos ago. Maybe, I don't know, two or three videos ago where that same exact thing happened both with the large and the fast where I was burning that Senko in and it was just, like popping on the top like that and I got blown up on it put it in free spool and then it ate it the same thing just happened but in the Colorado River <laughs> with a small mouth <laughs> oh 
it was so cool the water so crystal clear that you chased it across the little canal here I blew up on it missed it and i put it in free spool and i was watching the senko just fall and i watched him turn on it and just suck the whole thing in that was so cool oh man <laughs> how awesome is that rad oh man so cool thanks buddy god smallmouth are so cool i love this <sighs> sick Like a good one. The blind cast again. Oh, Threw my sinkhole. <laughs> They're so strong in the river, it's crazy. Come on, man. No, no. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Oh, there's a small mouth chasing him. Um, my, <laughs> let's find out. My scale's uh, stuck on kilograms, so oh. I gotta do the conversion real quick. But, I don't know, probably three pounds, three and a half. He's good size. He uh, usually hangs out on any deer watching his baby. It's always, yeah, I just, I, I blind cast it over by this little pedal boat, and I was yeah. literally, I was kicking backwards and looked over, my line was swimming off. <laughs> yeah, that's where he hangs out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let me do the conversion for you here. That's a healthy one, though. Yeah, he's, she's, he, I don't know, a late eight. Oh, got it, okay, yeah. Two pounds, I think it's 2.2, .2, right? Nice boat. 3.63 pounds. Not bad. Yeah, that's not a bad one for back here. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's kind of nice kicking around in this thing. You can kind of sneak up on them a little easier, especially back here. You know? It's a little cold, though, <laughs> Yeah. That Thank you, thank you. Just don't rip their heads off. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> oh man, I can't believe that female just ate that thing right next to my feet. There he is. I threw that little finesse jig in there and they hate having those crawdads crawl on their beds. Look at the, oh the female, check it out, the female's right here. Did that follow it out? Yeah. Yeah. She, she's got a, she's got another pound or two on him. That's crazy. She's a big girl. Bud. 
Yeah, he actually is healthy. He doesn't have very many hook. He's got one other hook rash. Yeah, for as many times as it's been harassed, it's surprising it hasn't been caught more frequently. Yeah, they're they're definitely a lot smarter than people give them credit for. That's well, a be that and, you know, beautiful right one. At, it's a pretty fish. Yeah, thanks, bud. They're right at that stage. Yep. All right, guys. I am out of the water walking back to where I parked my truck. Um, yeah, it turned out to be a super fun day. Honestly, I didn't didn't expect to catch that many fish. Um, didn't expect to get, you know, a few of those three and a half, close to four pound largemouths either. So that was super cool. Uh, I don't know if I got it on film, but when I was just kind of kicking along, the uh, Senko was hanging off the side of the float tube. And I just glanced down in the water, no joke, there's probably like a five and a half, six pound largemouth. Um, swim up to my Senko, grab it, start to swim off with it. So I grabbed my rod, put it in freeze pool. And as soon as I did that, it just spit it out and then I couldn't get her to eat again. She wasn't on a bed, but she was kind of staging outside of one. But it's just, it's, it's pretty funny how it works out sometimes. You know, you, you just not paying attention for 30 seconds and you look down the biggest fish you've seen all day has your bait in its mouth and you're not ready to set the hook but that's how it goes sometimes um still super cool to see it super stoked to caught all those fish got a three and a half hour drive home but it was totally worth it um looking forward to coming back out here again in the near future i know for sure we're going to be out here in june um doing some float tube stuff we might do like a <laughs> have one truck drop us up uh, off up a river and float all the way down to where our Airbnb is going to be um, and try, try to catch some smallmouth on the river there but yeah all in all super fun day it's always fun to get out and try somewhere new test yourself a little bit wish the water was a little warmer I'm a little chilly but got some <laughs> some fresh board shorts in the truck so yeah thanks so much for watching this one you guys um, stay tuned for the next one I don't know what it's going to be super excited for this season though I think um I'm actually going to Mexico for about nine days here in a, a few days. So hopefully I get to fish down there and uh, look, I found my truck. Um, yeah, hopefully I can bring all my stuff down there and do some fishing down in uh, La Paz is where we're going to be. So it's going to be super cool. But yeah, stay tuned, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.